Hello, and welcome to a slightly different Friday, because normally you'll be seeing a UAD video, and you probably will be next week, and most weeks, because UAD hits with the channel most of the games I use at the moment, although I am looking for an Age of Sail version, so I can do some of the Age of Sail discussions of their various systems and tactics and methodologies. I'm trying to get Total War to work well properly for that at the moment, but I might end up having to go with the same people who do UAD. Suggestions for games which I might want to use, might want to use, uh, good, be good for demonstrating points, please put down below in the comments. I'm always open to new ideas. I'm not buying any at the moment. That's one of the reasons why today I'll be using Galactic Civilizations 3 rather than 4. I don't buy new games while I'm working on a project. While I'm doing lots of this, I'm tapping away on the keyboard, I don't buy new games, and I even try and avoid buying new books unless they're series which I have to keep up with for some particular reason. For the simple reason, I don't want the distraction. And when you get a new game, you do want to play it in and embed it in. Plus, to be honest, as much as I love my little laptop, the more I play, uh, whenever I play games on it, I do worry about the poor thing. It strains as it is, but with games and recordings, that's being particularly cruel. I do have to get that tower working. But anyway, today I'm not going to be reading through any questions or comments from another video. I'm going to be entirely discussing something with you. Something which I've sort of hinted at in the title, but I'm going to explain more when it begins. I hope you're going to enjoy this discussion. I see it in some way as laying the groundwork for what might be next year's theme. Because this year has been the year of the cruiser. Now, most people are expecting next year to be another ship type. And that might well be the case for 2024. I do have a rough idea already in my head, but for 2024 and as I've said before, I do have a rough idea of roughly a five-year sort of schedule of, le le of, well, what I call the teaching schedule, because that's what I've been taught to write out. So that's how I planned it. I planned it as a five-year course with add-ons and things going on. And, that, you know, you as an academic, you revise your course anyway, and you're always doing it. So that doesn't, it, it could go on here virtually infinitum. But yeah, next year I have a theory about what I would like to do, and what I'd like it to be the year of. And so, yeah, this in many ways is a um, a tester video for that. So, without much further ado, let's go to Galactic Civilization, which is far more interesting than looking at me, and my ever-expanding pile of books. As pretty as they are, they are pretty. And so, uh, not this weekend, of course, because Saturday I'm at Chalk Valley History Festival, Sunday I'm at the lovely Tank Fest, but probably next weekend I'm hoping to break this all down, take it all out, and finally finish fixing this office up. So, soon it might start to look more organised, and you never know, the railway might get built on the, back, on, on the shelf here, so you might have trains running around behind me again. Hmm. Take care. So let's start off with this. Let's start off with what this game is. This game is a strategy game. It is a game where you have to think things through. And for ease, I'm going to be a human. Because being a human makes sense for me at the moment. You do have, though, various powers... I should always warn you of the Drengins and the Altarans. They're usually interesting. There's a range of them. Anyway, humans it is. Customize the galaxy makeup. What do I want? I want a, a large galaxy. I want a realistic one. So, huge. I want scattered stars. Yes, because that's more like it. Normal galaxy dinner. Yeah, I don't need it to be hard today. Let's see. 
Star frequencies, common planet frequency, abundant because it's helpful. Ooh, common. Pirate bases, ah, they're, they're quite fun to have. Habitable ones, common, yes. Resource frequency, da -da 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 -da, all fine. Victory conditions, uh, nope, 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 nope. Sorry, yeah, uh, if I'm going to have this going, I'm going to have a game I can actually use at some point later in the day. And honestly, I am not using any of the other options. And let's go. Remove, 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 remove. And remove. Mm-hmm. I don't. Oh, I don't need a Terra uh, or the United Earth. Oh, Arcanians are always fun to have. A nice training one. And the Taurians. That should give me nine total play uh, uh, involved. Right. So, what am I talking to you about? What is this all about? Well, it's very simple technology. Technology and the evolution of technology. It matters. It really does. How you go from point to point. There are a lot of factors which play into a technology coming about. Into a capability developing and being the case. But you need them to be working. You need it, all those factors to be there. And we're here. So why is this game a good illustration of this? Well, I've started off on the edge of the map. In fact, I've started off in the northern area, and I think the north, I would go northeastern edge of the map. Woo! That's actually Pretty darn perfect. Right then. Manage. And I want to build some constructors. Now, I'm doing this because I have some advantages, if you had noticed out there. Need a couple of scouts. There is some Duranthian, which is stuff you can use later on for armor. I have this lovely vessel, which is... Mm. Uh, our exploration ship. And this is my planet, Earth. How am I going to build it? Well... I'm going to need some industrial, aren't I? I'm going to need computer. Uh, I'm going to need research. Ooh. Let's start off with the industrial. And, hmm, let's rush that build. And now comes the important thing. Now I set that all up. What technology would you like to research? And this is the fact that you have to start thinking about it because quite a lot of people start, uh, quite a lot of people when they start looking at history, start going, well, this technology was always going to come about. Was it? Was that technology always a factor? Now, Myself, I tend to start off with artificial gravity because that helps in other things. And then, 
it's turn time. Now, the interesting thing is this game slows down a lot once it starts to find other people. Ooh, thank you. A nice anomaly. You can manage a lot of things about this game, and this is another factor which starts to have a realisation with real life, in that you can decide what's your tax rate. Do you have any leaders spare? What do you consider in terms of your research budget, your various economies? And to be honest, I am quite, how do I put this, pro-research when it comes to my economy. I do tend to try and put as much into it, uh, uh, into sort of the research and the economics as possible to make things as strong as possible. Yay, we have the gravity technology. That's always useful. Spa spatial manipulation, militarization, space elevators, all these are there. But... Probably the Universal Translator is good because at some point I am going to find myself dealing with, well, you know what they are. They are the most annoying people known to mankind. Yes, I'm of course talking about aliens. That will mean I will actually have to start talking with other people. And that's one of the things where this game does really give you a sort of idea. Now, there are advantages to actually going for extra survey ships early on in this game. It helps you find things out. It helps you find the place. And again, a good a good survey ship is going to test a lot of technologies in real life that a warship will need for long-range operations. Again, if we consider this, one of the factors often forgotten in development of the Royal Navy as it becomes in the Napoleonic era is his obsession with doing long-range research, with sending out all those expeditions. Not just the famous ones to the Pacific, but there are countless other ones. Survey ships, study missions... All these things going on, testing skills, testing knowledge, testing science, which you could then apply to a wider level, to your larger fleet, when you needed to scale it up. Hey, we have... you so you will go to there and i'll put a i'll set up something there hmm doing well on the inside on the uh Research pattern, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Hanging out. Now I've got Theranthium coming in. And again, I'm quite lucky where I am. I seem to be finding quite a lot of places to get resources, get materials. And if I've got a, a lovely new person, I want them to be a scientist. Why? Because I want to up my science factor. I want to up my research factor. And this is important. One of the things that's often brought up when we talk about HMS Warrior and her coming about, you look at all the technologies that have been developed in different bits, which have been developed at various points and tried on various ships and various companies, and then they're brought together. That was the British advantage that they could do it. 
there's a similar advantage in World War Two for Britain, for America, for a lot of nations involved, in that they've been doing this research for long enough that, that they are able to do it. That they are able to get up this works. Ooh, Fulham. Lots of stuff going on over here. And ooh, lots of interesting stuff over here. Promethean. A culture relic. Oh, hello. Galactic Bazaar. Um, yeah, I don't really need mercenaries at the moment. That's annoying, but not for too problematic for me. Now I've got another one of you to pot around. You can go to here. Hmm. Research really going quite well on these things. Again, I'm going for a lot of the science which allows me to look very far away. I'm improving, focusing on the science which gives me vision. Again, like maybe a warship and science and the science that goes with targeting. If you want to give an example of that, there's the range of engagement when HMS Dreadnought and the Invincibles come into service. And there's a range of engagement by the time you get to 1914. It's changed dramatically. Hmm. Now, which of these do you think would be best? I think a free, fully laden... Conley ship will be quite good to have. Right then, where's the best planet I have in my range? That's a 14. That's a 15. Can't do that one, but it's a 13. That's a 10. 15 it is. So, when you're designing HMS Invincible, and you say her speed is armor, that's because she's able to engage, she's able to outpace the speed of traverse of guns at the engagement ranges which they're standing engaging at the time when she's built. However, by the time you're dealing with engagement ranges which are many times greater in distance. The, of course, range of traverse, the gun needs to turn far less to cover a greater distance, and you can no longer outpace the guns. And I would argue that's the point to which the fast battleship starts to make sense. That's when the battle cruiser starts to head towards the battle spectrum, and when the battleship starts to head towards the well, we've got to get faster spectrum because that's the reality. Hmm.
It's negative ten percent morale or negative ten percent income. Um, I'm doing that. I'm going to try and pursue uh, active, neutral, and good policy. See if I can't confuse the system. But anyway, leaving that to one side. So, if technology proceeded in a straight line, the world would be very, very simple, but it doesn't. There are lots of twists and turns in the development of technology. There are paths which can look promising and look very good when you're looking at them to the future. And then when you're looking at them when they're in the past, you go, why did you not see that that was a dead end? Why did you go down that route? And the answer often comes down to it made sense at the time. And it made sense at the time for various reasons. Some of those were good reasons, some of those were bad reasons, but it made sense at the time. So it's always a fun thing when you give games as an illustrator of a problem because uh, you can quickly realize that what well, was quite a good idea and worked well in theory didn't work so well in practice when you were doing the recording. I'm hoping it worked out better. I'm hoping it worked out well. But the trouble is that's quite an involved game, whereas with World of Warship, uh, with um, UAD and to an extent with World of Warships, you can set it up and let it go. That one you do keep being asked for. What can we do now? What do we do now? What do we do here? And I'm not yet practiced enough with the whole gaming and talking thing. I get distracted, thinking through, going, what should I do? But that's rather the point. If thinking through technology and thinking through what makes most sense for what you're doing and the scenario you're in and can change every single time, depending on what resources you have allocated, depending on what kind of strategic situation you're in. I had no threats at that point, so I didn't need to prioritize military, uh, militaristic knowledge. I could, uh, uh, could prioritize science and research spending and all those things to build up my economy, preparing for when I might need the military skills. I could do all that because I had time on my side. I can prioritize different phases of the technological development cycle, depending on what kind of context and scenario I'm in. And this feeds into the development of technology. One of the things I often see discussed is the whole rifle, sorry, musket debate. Um, the amount of people who come up with going, oh, well, you know, the French, the reason for their preference for rifles was, uh, for muskets, sorry, was, you know, they wanted a large army with a, vol with a volume of fire, a, a high rate of fire, and you could fire more rounds from a musket than you can a rifle. But the British, you know, the reason they had rifles was because they had a smaller army. And it was for colonial policing. Well, in the Napoleonic era, it's not really for colonial policing. Let's be honest, there isn't anywhere near as much of a col as an, of an empire as there would be. So you can't really argue the armies for colonial policing, especially as for most of that period, let's be honest, India is policed by the East India Company, not by the British Army, if you call it policed. So, yeah, that's not really as much of a factor as you'd think about it. Actually, it comes towards the technological base and logistical base. It's a simple thing, but Britain's already got a huge amount of foundries and is used to exporting and managing the escort, export and logistics of supporting a navy. Because the British Navy has continually been on deployment, the various Royal Navy around the world, whereas the French Navy keeps returning to port and then going out. So if you start to manage the logistics and the deployment of ships and the support of ships around the world, well, then it's quite easy to start working out, well, hang on, we need to, assort, we need to sort out the supply of rifles, bullets, and musket balls, 
and the various things that you need to make those various systems work. What are the French relying on? Often foraging. Often foraging, but they still need a certain level of industrial support to get the military supplies they need in the quantities they need. But to get them through is far more difficult than the British, who tend to go, no working. Where's the nearest ship? It comes sailing in. Hello, brought your supplies. Woohoo! Wellington does a huge campaign through the peninsula, through Iberia. Portugal, Spain, all the way up, and is starting to head into southern France. The whole way along, there are ports. There is the navy turning up with, here are your supplies. You can sustain rifles as well as muskets if you have the logistics. You have the logistics because you've had to develop it because of other things. This is the interesting sort of almost semi-circular argument you can end up with technological development and the use of technology. You have something because you already had to have something for another reason, and because you have that thing, you're then able to do uh, you're then able to do X, which results in Y. So because you've had to do A, you've had to do C because of B, you're able to do X and therefore Y. But if you hadn't had to do that, you wouldn't be able to do that. But you can do other things. Technology does not go in a nice straight line. Technological development is not straight. It's da 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 da. Oh no, hang on, that didn't work. Okay, backtrack. Da 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 da. Hang on, we've got new metallurgy. That might work. Da 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 da. Hang on, no new metal. That's not what that piece out there. New metallurgy. Oh, this one might work. Like. Da 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 da. Classic example: forty millimeter cannon. Okay. Pom pom versus Bofors. Both are good systems. One you could say is orientated around rate of fire. One is orientated a bit more about range, but they're broadly speaking not that dissimilar. And you get people trying to talk about them as if they're hugely, amazingly different. They're not. They're slightly different concepts and they're slightly different developments. And when you look at the modern 40 millimeters, amazingly, a lot of that de differences of technology have actually fused back together. So it's some sort of that. So that's what I'm sort of thinking about for next year. And I know I'm announcing this in June with six months to go, but I, I'd like to have some ideas. I'd like to see what ideas might be coming from you. But basically, my idea is to go each week doing a bit of a long patrol on a specific piece of technology and its development and how it fits in and start off with probably the age of sale and work my way forward and end up by november getting to probably radar guided gunnery and missiles and those sort of things because whilst i don't have theoretically an end of my channel because as i've said before in past my phd is war studies so I have to come right up to the current day just to do my teaching. And, you know, back when I started my PhD at King's, one of the first classes I ended up teaching on was the Al Four Peninsula and the Anglo American, uh, the Anglo American operation that sort of involved the Al Four Peninsula. And I know it's a British landing and it's a British operation, all those things. I tend to call it an Anglo-American, though, because the Americans provided some of the surveillance assets and some of the cover assets. But that was in turn because that, their surveillance assets were better for that role, and the British surveillance assets were better for a different role, which was supporting the Americans. Because they had taken slightly different routes on technology, which meant there were small margins where they were slightly better at one thing and slightly better at the other thing. Which is useful. Again, one of the technology things that comes up and the debate sort of comes up is the debate of alliance standardization versus individualization. Standardization is better for logistical support, but individualization makes it far more difficult for the enemy of the alliance to counter your technology. If we use a Star Trek, more recent example, Deep Space Nine, Dominion War. There is, of course, 
the very big problem when another race enters the war, allying with the Dominion and attacking shields. And it turns out the Klingon bird of prey and Klingon shields can be modified to be survivable against this attack. But the Federation's ones need to be completely redesigned to do it. But the Federation probably has the better shielding technology of the two, na of the two species. But the Federation shields aren't adapted to that circumstance. Rules of standardization, standardization would be, let's bring them together and make the best shields we possibly can. But the differences are what helps save the scenario. And you have a similar thing if you go back to World War II. You've got the British tanks, you've got the American tanks, you've got the Russian tanks. They've all got slightly different capabilities. And let's be honest, the Russians probably have the best view because they get the rejects from everyone else. <laughs> Sadly. So yeah, next year I'm looking at technology. And I'm going to try and... What I might do... What I might do is record a game in terms of the the civilization game and then do the speaking over it after I've recorded it. I think that might be a better uh, better idea than recording and talking over uh, talking of XSplit. I think that might produce a better result, but we'll see. But I wanted to get you thinking and I wanted to start with an idea of the technological development of navies and why it's an ongoing process and why it's very much a living organic process rather than a nice scientific chart of a line of technological development. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, toodles. Hopefully see you if you're uh, there at Chalk Valley or at um, Tankfest on Sunday. It'll be fun to be at both. Take care, everyone.